Tuck your heads, all ye gates, and be lifted up, ye everlasting doors, so the King of glory may come in, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Who is the King of glory? That the King of Glory may come in, and of His kingdom there will be no end. Who is the King of Glory? 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 Well, good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome back to Thundering Prayer today. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Come on in, come on in, come on in. Let's get going today. Thanking God for all of what he's done, everything that he's done, everything that he's doing, all that he wants to say, everywhere he wants to go. Come on here, Jesus. Just do it today. Do it today. Do what you do so good. 
be magnified, glorified. I just pronounce upon your people today that they are hearing you. They are obeying you. They're going into the things of God that they're supposed to go in for you, God. They're looking at you and you're coming in first place in their lives and nothing is going to take them out. I pronounce it today upon your lives that God is going to use you mightily and that he is going to finish what he started up in your life. I call it forth. I speak it forth. I speak it that you hear God, that you're understanding God, that you understand that, that God wants to say to you. I pronounce upon your life that you are going to follow God at all costs. Nothing will stop you from following your king. Nothing, nothing, nothing. And all that he says unto you, you let it happen. You let his anointing break your yokes. You let his anointing change your mind. You let his anointing bring you into that place he wants you to be in. I speak it today that you are totally in a place where you are saying, God, your will be done, not mine. Your anointing come forth in me. Your anointing breakthrough in me. Let it be so that you are proclaiming the voice of the Lord in your life and nothing is stopping it. Nothing is stopping it. All the ways he wants to go. It's going to happen for you. I pronounce today that you're seeing new visions and new revelations that God is giving you for what he wants to do in the hours to come. I call forth that you are in a place where you are pronouncing upon this earth that you will win and you will live and you will not die. God has your best interest at heart and he wants you to see his magnification of his glorification. I speak it today that everything that you're supposed to have and everything that you're supposed to do that is already done by the word of God in Jesus name. It's done. You spoke it. It's so you spoke it. It's so you spoke it. It's so nothing will stop you if going where God wants you to go and doing what God tells you to do. You are his masterpiece and you are determined to have his way, not just your way operating your life. Come on, say it. I'm going to let Jesus be glorified and magnified. I just lift up those prayer requests that you all have given this week. Some of you have been just saying, pray for me. I've been doing that. I see where Angela says, my kids, Andrew Tate, Chris, Christopher Arnold and grandkids. I pray for them. I pray for all of your children and grandchildren right now. Jaquetta Tate and her kids and grandkids. I just speak in Jesus name, in Jesus name. Oh God, we just say in Jesus name that these children are coming to know you. They are coming to behold you. They are coming to get closer to you. They are coming to get all of what you have asked for them to have in their lives, to manifest in their lives right now in Jesus name. No more blockages, no more blockages. I just pronounce on you all that you're wealthy. I pronounce upon you all and declare and decree that you're healthy. I declare and decree that you are beginning to see the goodness of the Lord in this hour, in this day. I come against every hex, vex, and witchcraft spirit that's been sent after any of you. I speak in Jesus name that you are going to see everything God wants you to have and nothing less. I call forth the glory of God to manifest in your ways, in your day, ahead, in the months ahead. I speak that you are coming to a place where miracles are just instantaneous instantaneous in your life and that you are coming to where, where you know that you know that you know that God is in control. And so there's no devil, no demon, nothing that can take you out. I lift up your children, Shannon Ramsey, in Jesus' name. I lift up your children today, Cassandra Hines, in Jesus' name. I lift up your children, Nessa, in the name of Jesus. I lift up your children, Dovey. Right now, I call forth your children are coming in order. Marsha Withers, I speak it in Jesus' name. Your children are coming in order in the name of Jesus. I call forth today that whatever's been blocking your miracles today is coming unleashed. I say that in Jesus name, you are walking in the divine plan of God and you will not walk in the plan of the enemy. I break off those things that have caused you to think the way you shouldn't think. I call your mind back in order and you are not confused. I break the spirit of confusion off of you. I speak in Jesus name that you are no longer under the power of Satan's plans of trying to take your mind. Your mind is clear. Your mind is healthy. Some of you that have had scattered minds, I break that off of you right now in Jesus' name. Clarity comes back to you. Let it be so in the name of Jesus. I call forth in Jesus' name that those projects that you're supposed to finish, that you're on the place of getting them done. You're in that realm. You're in that pattern of what God wants to do to finish some projects in your life. Some of you just need to clean out your garage. I speak in Jesus' name that your garages are not cluttered. <laughs> 
They are not out of order. They're in order. You're taking the time to get things back in order because it's going to affect you spiritually if you keep on letting those things just lay up and distract you and take you to a place where you shouldn't be with God. God says, clean it up, clean it up. Some of those garages in your mind, clean it up. Some of those garages that are for real, clean them up. Now, I didn't try to make that up. I'm just telling you right now, that's what he's saying. Get some things in order. Get some things in order. Quit pushing things in the closet. He said that you know good and well, good and well, that God said, uh uh, fold that up, put that up, get rid of that, give that away. Whatever it is, it's time for us to do it the way God said to do it. He says, get your house in order, that spiritual house, but it always comes in the natural. And he says, okay, now I want you to do this. I want you to take care of putting the dishes up on the shelf instead of leaving them in the sink. I, I'm, I'm telling you, this is what he's speaking this morning. It's clean house day. It's clean house month. It's clean house year. He's looking for everything to be in order. You represent him. So you can't represent him with dirty. You can't represent him with just doing any kind of thing, throwing it everywhere, pushing things up under your car seat. When you know good and well, that stuff that you put under the car seat is trash. Come on, in Jesus name, get things back in order in your life. If you want order in your spirit, Spirit, you got to come on and say right now, the natural has to be cleaned up in the name of Jesus. I don't care what it is. God says, I want it clean. I want it clean. Your refrigerator is stale. It's smelling. It's not looking like it needs to look. All of these represent the king of kings. Somebody comes over and says, may I get a glass of water? Can I have some water out of your fridge? And you're running to say, well, I'll get it. I'll get it. I'll get it. No, it's because you know it needs to be cleaned out. What is God saying right now? He's saying it's time for us to get some things back in place like they need to, because you don't know when he's going to show up with somebody that's going to actually look at you and say, I thought you were this, but it looks like you're this. God's speaking it today. Go clean your refrigerator. Get your stove and get the crust out. Come on. Get everything that you need to do with your body clean. Go get you a massage or get you some type of a pedicure or get you something done to your fingernails. Come on here. Some of y'all men, your feet look a mess. God said, that's it. I'm looking for you to clean up some things. He's speaking right to our hearts right now. He's telling us that's enough. That's enough. That's enough. You say you love me. You say that I, I'm your king and that you want everybody to see me, but I see what you don't want to play with and deal with. Come on. You got to deal with it. Deal with that thing that's on the inside. Deal with those areas that are showing up physically and they represent the spiritual that is going on inside of you. Clutter, get out. Clutter, get out. Clutter, get out. In Jesus' name. I know that this is a word because it's shaking me right now. I know it's a word that he's trying to say to say a lot of stuff that you're letting just go on and on and on. He's not overlooking. So you need to stop overlooking. Don't go, go try to clean up Johnny's place and get that out of Johnny's eye when it's messed up in your own. It's messed up in your own. Come on here today. Time out, time out, time out for going through the same old, same old, not let, letting God know that you really do care about him and you represent him. You represent him on that dress that's too tight. And that's not what he wants for representation. He's saying, get it cleaned up, get it right, okay? Take that dress off, go ahead and quit trying to wear size nines when you wear size 16s. Come on, get it together. God does, uh -uh, he does not respect what we don't respect, okay? Okay, it's time to get it in order. Okay, I wanna quit right there because I could, mm, ah, God, he's, he's disturbed by something. He's like, no, 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 no. Enough is enough, all right? Let's see if we can do this without having to have a second rebuke because the second rebuke hurts real bad. <sighs> He'll show it up. He'll let your toilet seat be sitting out in the middle of the street. Whew. Okay, here we go. Hallelujah, hallelujah. That's a word of the Lord that God has placed in my heart for right now. I did not think, okay, let me see how I can make this come out. No, it just kind of, God said, that's it. That's it. And he talks, when he talks to you all, he's talking to me too. There's areas that he'll say, uh-uh, uh-uh. No, your yard looks a mess or or, or or your face is just totally just looking like somebody that's not supposed to be. Uh, he'll tell me different things and he'll say, clean it up, clear it up, get it right. Da, 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 da. OK, so that's what he said to us this morning. Why I go right into what God has given us on the second part of what he wants to hear, let us hear today. Stop blocking your miracles with human logic. Can you just get that in you right now? Just come on. Stop blocking your miracles with human logic. Sometimes we do that and we don't know that we're doing it, but it happens. You know, when we actually travel across a bridge, say there's a big bridge right now in your, in your town. 
It, it what it typically means is there's two bodies of land that have separated by a challenge of whatever it might be. You know, you can't get across there without this bridge. It's designed to take you where you are to go, actually, and are where you're trying to go. The bridges are important. Okay, get, grab that. The bridge that God has actually constructed for us to move from the natural to the supernatural, that bridge is called the bridge of faith. All right. You all need to be crossing the bridge of faith. It's just what he wants you to hear. Unbelief will get you stuck right where you are. Just oh, can't move. How many of us want to cross the bridge of faith today? I'll put both of my hands up. And to do so, we have to stop blocking our miracles with that human logic. It just can't happen like that. God's not going to go that direction. Unbelief is so powerful. It works to try and block our God's work in all of our lives. That's what it does every single day. The scripture says in Mark eleven twenty four to believe, to receive, to believe, to receive, to believe, to receive. And he says, I believe. Sally says, I believe. David says, I believe, but I'm a little bit shaky. That's what that scripture is saying. I'm just a little bit shaky. Help my unbelief. Lord, will you please give me what I lack so I can go deep enough to believe like you want me to, God? Could you do that? So even our faith is weak. When it's weak, we, we have a faith helper. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He's so ready for your miracle, but the miracle comes. And then sometimes it slows down because of what? Our unbelief. We're not finishing crossing this bridge. Come on here today, Jesus. Ah, I just want to break that out today. I want to challenge every one of you today to stop blocking your miracle with unbelief. You say you believe, but you don't really believe because you stop it right in the middle. You get in the middle of the bridge and say, I believe, but then you get shaky. I think I can get across this bridge. I, I think I can finish what you told me to do. I, 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 I believe I can do it. But based on the word of God, a lot of us have not seen God come through all the way and produce that miracle to happen because we're holding up God's miracle work and power with what? Unbelief. Unbelief. God wants to shake that loose this morning. He wants to bring it to a place where we quit that. We are delaying and we're denying his supernatural presence coming in our lives and our situations and into our circumstances. Let me explain what I mean by something that is actually supernatural that wants to happen. God has natural laws that actually govern the world, right? So the world works by natural, predictable laws. But when I talk about something supernatural, I'm talking about God trumping every law. He will trump it. So help me, he will. He's allowed the laws to be set in place. But a miracle is when God overrules our laws or any law. He sets things in place by order, by what he wants to accomplish, something that he wants to do, right? But when you accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you entered the realm of the supernatural, which means that you have access to that which operates outside of the world, outside of the natural realm. That's what he's saying. The problem is that we're so tied up to the natural, we often miss, resist, or delay, or deny the supernatural, okay? Our story is just one of those stories that we have to get and turn around. Hmm, let it be so, in Jesus' name. God just broke in right there, okay? You know how God will just come in and say, I interrupt this program to bring you this special announcement. He just broke in just now and said, wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. I'm not going to disobey him. I'm going to tell you all something. God is ready to change some things in our lives, but it's going to have to happen by us being obedient to his will. Yeah, he shifted us back where we were. I just don't even want to tell you I'm sorry because I'm not. There's some things that God wills for us. Even when we talk about this bridge, he wills for us to get to the other side. Come on, get to the other side. But we're on a standstill. We're at a stopping place. We're at a place of halt. That's it, okay? He's telling us right now that there is not a need that you have that should trump his need. Nothing, nothing that you have going on. Well, God, I don't feel like it. That's not going to work for him. But God, I want a miracle. I want a miracle. I want a miracle. Then why don't you do what he told you to do so that it will come all the way through? 
Okay. God's letting it be known that there are some things that he's trying to bring order back into your life, but you're bringing disorder toward his throne. You're still talking like you're talking. You're still going places you shouldn't go. You're still watching what you shouldn't watch. You're still playing around with things that you told you to loosen and never touch it again. Keep your hands off of it. You're still looking for the holy with the unholy. God's like, no, 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 no. One of them have to be in control. And if you're talking about God, let it be so that it's God. God is causing us to come to a place where we are not going to depend upon man, depend upon things, de never depend on it like you depend on God. Our dependence has to go into a different realm and to a different place. God is speaking this morning to say, there are some things that you're dependent on that I'm going to take away. I'm going to annihilate. Okay. Oh my God. What? Don't do that, Jesus. God said it has to be so. Because he can't get his glory with another God rising up in front of your face. He can't get his glory with you loving your children more than you love him. He can't get his glory with you thinking that your spouse is more important than what he is. He's got to take us to another place. And he's going to do that by us being obedient. He's going to do that by us going down the journey of where he has us to go without playing with the same old fire that we played with yesterday. There is a purging going on. There is a purging operating in the spirit. And God is saying, I am ready to see you go and do it. Do what I told you to do and let me finish off all of the mess that has caused you stress. In this hour, God is causing us to see some things that we have never seen before, but we have not given any, any kind of due honor to him regarding it. God is causing our eyes to open up and begin to understand that that's not going to work for him. I've got to change this thing around, that you got to speak truth to somebody, that you got to take somebody out of darkness by just taking a stick and saying, let's go, a stick in the spirit. I'm not talking about a physical beating, but in some kind of way, you got to say, uh-uh, get in line. This is not going to happen. Mm, Jesus. Mm. He's causing us to break up to see that there's some mess going on in our lives that he's tolerated for the last time. God is not going to be a tolerating God in your future in 2024. He's going to tell you, yes, his grace is sufficient, but don't play with his grace because there's a space of grace that is mm, left opening up for us right now. I'm calling you all to wake up, hear God's voice and do what he told you to do. You put off his assignment because you thought that you needed some time to take a break and go on vacation. God said, that's over. Your assignment, your committal, your commitment, missioning has got to be fulfilled. He's in that no nonsense mood. And he's saying that that you've been doing has got to stop. I've got to get you to see. You can't play solitary all day and be able to hear his voice. He's not in the cards. He's not in the games. He's in this thing that he wants to do to bring his glory back to this earth, to bring his glory up on the people of God. God is speaking directly to every one of us to say, this is not going to work in my season. You know good well that what you've been talking about and doing has been on hold of doing it his way because you feel like, well, I got a little more time or somebody else to take care of it. Your apostle, your prophet, your teacher, your pastor, your mama is not going to do it for you. He, they are not going to finish what you need to finish. So therefore, whatever project in your life, come on, wake up, get it going. Everything that God told you to finish off two years ago, you need to say, God, give me grace to do it now. God, have mercy upon me. Forgive me. I repent. This thing is serious. You are about to turn earth upside down. You are about to shine through this earth like you never have before. You are about to pierce darkness like you've never been done before. And God, I cannot be on the, the wayside. I can't be distracted. I can't be disappointed with everything not happening the way I thought. I have got to do it the way you called it to be done. And I've got to put my mindset on what you're saying. This day, God is walking hard. He's walking hard. I'm telling you, he's walking steady, but he's walking hard. You can hear his footprints when you in the middle of the night, God is saying, no, 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 no. I have come to deliver and set free. But if you're in my way, you're going to get knocked out of the way. You're going to be pulled to the side. And this time you won't get back in. Jesus, have mercy upon us. We are not going to let God take us out in this season because God wants to let it be known.
said, if you obey him, I'll give you what you want. If you do what you do, I'll get what I want. Come on, let God say something to you this morning. That clean up portion of what he started out this morning, he's still on fire with it. He's still letting it be known. What in the world do you think you're doing? I need my people saved. I need my children out of bondage. I need my kids that I have placed in your belly and given you birth, given you an opportunity to give birth to that this day, I need them delivered from bondage. I'm looking for you right now to go and talk to your two-year-olds, your six-year-olds, your 18-year-olds, and your 50-year-olds and tell them today, this is what God is saying. Clean up time. It's time to stop doing what you did and put it back in order the way God called it to be. Put your life back in order. Put your attitude back in order. Put your disposition back in order. Come on, tell somebody I've done it too long. I've had enough and so has God. I'm bringing this life of mine back in the place where it needs to be. Yo, child, you coming to Jesus. Child, you're going to know Jesus. I tell you, I call it upon you today. You might be in your bed praying that prayer, but you better call your children back to God. You better call your mama back to God. You better call your sister back to God. You better scream out from the mountaintop. It's time to get saved. Come on here. You're not going to go back and forth. I refuse to let you go. I call you into the kingdom. I call you into God. I call you to quit doing drugs. I call you to quit sleeping around with every Tom, Dick, and Joe. I speak in Jesus' name that you are hearing God. You are hearing and you obeying God. You're going to do what he told you to do because God said it is so. Time is out. Time is out for going through the motions. You're going to have to speak it in the airways. You got to get in the car and drive to Walmart and on your way say, Jesus, yet will I trust you. Jesus, I call Cindy in. Jesus, I call Mary in. Jesus, I call David in. I call them in into the kingdom. I call them in. And when you get out of the car and you say hello, you need to pray for the person you're looking at and say Jesus in Jesus' name. They won't go to hell. I call them into the kingdom. God is moving fast. He's moving in a place that you've never seen him before because he's saying, this time I win. You've been playing around with me, but this time I win. You're going to have to make that decision. I'm not going to be on the outside. I'm coming to the inside and I'm going to do it God's way. I refuse to let those that I know and I love go to hell. I refuse to let them just keep on doing what they're doing. Sleeping with Johnny and sleeping with Cindy is not going to be the ultimate re the decision of what they're going to have to have to do in their life. They're going to make a decision to come to Christ. This day, God is saying, Clean up yourself so that they will see the cleanliness that I want to be in them. Let, them. let you be the example of what they are needing to be in Jesus' name. Don't wait for Pastor and Johnny and, and, and Evangelist Susie to go take them into the kingdom. You better get it in order, he said, because you are the ones that they will never, never, never look for another. But they will trust you because they see Jesus in you. Come on, let it be so right now. He's stirring this because he's seen enough mess. He's given you enough dreams. He's given you enough understanding. He's already shaken your house. Don't let him have to shake it again. Come on, make a decision right now. My family will know the voice of God. Me and my house, they will be saved. Okay, let it be right now. And I'm going to start with a cleanup on the outside so I can go on and, and, and represent him on the inside. God said representation is his key today. And if you're not representing him, you're representing the devil. So it's your decision right now. I'm through. I'm through. I'm through trying to tell everybody else I'm going to work on me. I'm going to make sure that I've got this in order and they will see it and get themselves in order. Now, whatever it is that God is bringing right there to, to the light today, he's trying to say enough is enough. Enough is enough. You're crying on the altar, but you're not doing anything about it. You're getting everybody to lay hands on you, but you're not doing anything. Sometimes God will break us open by saying, go get up under your bed and get those 32 pairs of shoes and give at least 30 of them away because they're not going to be back on your feet no time soon. Anyway, give them up. That's one way he's moving right there. He's telling us, get rid of the clutter. Get rid of the extra. Get rid of it. Some of y'all got $50,000 in your bank account. But you can't give away but $5 in the offering plate. God is coming after us. He's coming after us. Quit trying to say, well, I just want to bless somebody when one day, but right now, I don't know. I'm just, no, no, no. Do what he told you to do. Give it to the kingdom. Give it to the kingdom. You want to break through, do what he told you to do. Quit playing with him. Go after his family. Johnny across the street is his family. Samantha around the corner is his family. Go after somebody. 
lay on the altar for somebody else, okay? And while you're doing it, don't forget, go keep yourself clean. Take off two pounds of makeup. Come on, just do what he's telling you this morning. Put on something that is making you look pure like he wants you to on the outside and the inside is what he's looking for. But he's telling you, don't feel like you have to be Johnny and Susie when he told you to be who you are. Apostle Sally, be who you are. Apostle Sally, be who you are. Come on, put your name in there. I'm going to be who I am supposed to be. And I'm going to go after what God wants to get. And I'm going to represent him. And when you come to my house, you're not going to come and me have to say, excuse the mess. You got the mess already cleaned up. Now, it, that's saying in the natural, but in the spiritual, it has to be the same thing. People are looking at us and saying, ooh, that's a mess. I don't know what they got going on, but there's a mess in there. No, let that be taken off of us. Strip it off of us right now, okay? Let it be known that when they see us, they see the purity of God. They see the, the greatness of God. They see the example of God. You a teacher. Well, that's great. But let the teacher that God put in there shine through. You a pastor. That's wonderful. But be the shepherd you're supposed to be. Go feed your sheep. Come on, give them what they're supposed to get. Quit giving them just anything. Loose that off of yourself. Make a decision today, a declaration in the atmosphere. I will do it God's way. He's calling it right now. I'm telling you. Marsha, both you Marshas, God has a plan for your life and he's trying to do some mighty things in your life. He's waiting on you. He's waiting on you to finish up what he told you to do. Do the things that he put inside of you instead and don't say, it'll take me 10 years to do it. Some things will take some time, but some things we're past due. Marshas, both of you, Marsha Shannon, Marsha Withers, God wants to use you in a greater way than you've ever been used before. He's ready for you to take on what he told you to take on. Don't look back. Don't try to go back. Don't try to say, give me a few more days. It's time to do it now. It's time to speak truth now. It's time to get into your seats now in Jesus' name. I speak it over you all that you're obeying God at all costs in the name of Jesus. Let it be so right now, Vanessa Baggage, that you're going all the way for Jesus and you will not stop at anything that God told you to do because you know that your timing, your steps are ordered by him and he has a plan to get it done in what he wants. God's in a forceful mood today because he's saying, y'all have lost those that should have been in the kingdom. You have allowed things to just come in and just take them out, but you didn't do it my way. God said, it's got to be done his way. Jock, Tom, Jack, uh, Jack, I think it's Jock Thomas in Jesus name. God is telling you that you have a life to be able to be seen in many places, in dark places. God said, quit thinking less of yourself. Get into a place where you do it his way. Evangelist Mobley, Carol Mobley, God has his hand up on your life, but you have got to begin to see his goodness in what he tells you to do. Everything is not going to be hard. It's going to be easier for you because you're going to obey him when he told you to, and you're not going to wait two years to do it. Let it be so that you get in your proper seat and that you you don't look back. You go all the way for him, no matter what's going on. Dovey, in Jesus' name, God said he heard you the first time and he's going to do what he said he would do. You're going to have to hold on no matter what it feels like and what somebody said, I give you this, but you won't have this very long. That's a lie from the pit of hell. God said you're already healed and you're already restored. You're going to have to hold on to that because the devil's going to try to blow a wind against you and it's not going to work. Come on, you got to say that. It is not going to prosper. That thing that's trying to come against you, Alvin, in Jesus' name, God is climbing you to another level. He's already taken you up some levels that you never even thought he would do. But this next level, you've got to, it's got to be all of him. It's got to be all of him, Alvin. Take loose everything that's trying to tie you up to take you a place you shouldn't go. Come on, let it be that it, the ropes drop off of you. You are free to be free. Now be who God called you to be in the name of Jesus. Pastor Howard, God is anointing you for a fresh, 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 fresh direction. And this fresh direction is going to cause some people to say, wait, 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 where are you going? What you doing, man? What, what, what's that mean? God said, do not be afraid of what you will see to happen for your future because your future is going to determine where you will be in your destiny. It has to be his way or no way. In other words, Pastor Howard, there's some things that you're going to have to step out into the water to do that some people say, no, 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 no. Don't do that. No, 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 no. Don't, don't go there. The people and the men and women of God that are going to try to take you off course, you're going to have to say, uh, uh, I'm obeying God. I'm obeying God. I've got to do it his way. I can't play with this. Tanya 
uh, I think it's wool hack in Jesus name. God is restoring your joy back. And that joy is going to cause you to lift up and be able to raise your hands and be able to say, ah, God, I want it. I want it. I want, I want all of the peace. I want all of the joy. I want the overflow, God. So you're going to cry out to God and say, thank you for the overflow. I've cried out for everything you told me to have. I refuse to have the less. I will have the best in the name of Jesus. Let it be so. I speak it over you all today, every single one of you, that your days are changing. Your light is coming in. The peace of God is overflowing through you. The grace of God is taking you to the highest pinnacle of where he called you to be. You will not be with less. It's time for you to sing your songs. It's time for you to sow your seed. It's time for you to go into places you've never been. Countries he told you to get into two years ago. He's given you that window of opportunity to go back. He's calling some of you to come on and take on your full strategy that he put inside of you, that you let left it way down deep. God said, bring it up. It's time for you to get into some places you never thought you should go. And you're not going to have to depend on people. You're going to depend on God. God will use his people, but he wants your dependency totally on him. Your trust totally on him. Your attitude has to be, I, I, I got to do it God's way. I've got to do it God's way. God is pronouncing upon you the peace that you need to finish his course in Jesus name. Billy Dean Blair, my sister, I tell you in Jesus name, God wants to see you shine in this late hour. So don't think I'm too old. I'm too weary. It's too much. God said, strip it off of yourself. You're going to have to say some things to people that you never said before. Quit being afraid of their faces. I don't care who they are. There's a respect for the men and women of God, but you have got to say it because you are the only mouth that he has right now to use to touch certain people's hearts in Jesus name. Let it be so that you do what he told you to do. Let it be so Cassandra that you finish your course. Let it be so Cassandra that you don't play with God. Not a minute, not a minute, not a minute, because he's taking your credentials and ready to use them in the high places. You have got to step into your destiny. You have got to move and walk under his anointing. You can't look shy. You can't look this way and that way. You got to be strong and bold. And that boldness is going to change people on the face of this earth and bring them into the kingdom before they die. You have got to speak the truth. Death has not been your best friend, but I can tell you right now, God is. And everything that has happened in your life was for conditioning you to get you ready for who he called you to be. So get ready to quit talking about your past and what you went through and woe is me. God said today, he lifts it off of you and he takes you to a place where you speak what does say of God when he tells you to, because that's the way he's going to get you to your destiny and get him to be glorified in the name of Jesus. Let it be so all of you hear the voice of God today. It's powerful. It's coming into a way of where he's, like I said, walking tall. He's walking strong. He's walking hard. And he's saying, I have brought change into this earth. You better get ready for it and move in the capacity that he gave you to move. Let it be so in Jesus name. I end right there. And I tell you, God is on fire. He's got some, mm, He's got some power coming in. You better go clean your house if that's what he told you to do. Your inside house is going to shine out on the outside by you doing what God told you to do, okay? Do what he told you to do. It's a serious hour, and I know he wants the glory, all right? Let it be so today. I end with that for real. I know I said it twice, but I'm saying it one more time. Come on, come on. He's coming before his throne with worship. You have to come before his throne with worship. I come before his throne with worship. And I put my life back in order in Jesus' name. See you tomorrow. We come before your throne with worship. 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 Come on, y'all. Come before your throne with worship. Bring it in. Come before your throne with worship. We 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 come before your throne with worship. Bring it in.